We know we're supposed to walk by faith and we want to walk by faith, but why is it so hard? Here are four essentials to jumpstarting a walk of faith. If you are a believer, you actually have way more faith than you think. You had to have faith to believe. By grace, you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. You have never seen Jesus in the flesh, walking around, teaching, performing miracles. Yet by faith, you believe in him. You also have faith, I hope, that you have eternal life and that Jesus will one day come again in glory. So we have faith about what happened in the ancient past and faith in the future. It's the middle that we have trouble with. Somehow, after we're saved, we have this need to walk by sight. And I'm sure it's been that way through the ages, but we are living in a highly visual age. We've got television, YouTube, live streaming, social media, on our TV, computers, tablets, phone. We are ever seeing what's happening with just about anybody we want to keep up with in the world. We see what everybody is doing, what their kids are doing, how much they're accomplishing, how happy their lives and marriages are, what they're doing in ministry. Never mind that we're only seeing what they want us to see. All that glitters ain't gold. Still, we can get caught up in comparing ourselves. We want to see some of these things in our own lives. Never mind about prayer and faith and waiting. We want to see it now and we get discouraged and disillusioned when we don't. We forget that our focus should be the Lord and His will. Our focus should be what He's calling us to do. And one of the things He calls us to do is to walk by faith. For we walk by faith, not by sight. What does that mean? It means we are always in a mode of waiting, hoping, praying for God to reveal the next step on the journey, to move in the heart of a loved one, to establish his plans, to heal, protect, restore, deliver. A walk of faith means we can't see the things we hope for, the things God has put in our hearts, and yet we believe like Noah, who had never seen rain a day in his life, but built that ark because God said he was sending rain to flood the earth. Noah believed by faith, or Abraham who left his home in Mesopotamia when God called him, didn't know where he was going or what he would do, but by faith he followed God. Here's the definition from Hebrews. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, or as the King James puts it, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. This is supposed to be our lives. We're supposed to have an assurance of what we hope for. And let me be clear, I'm not talking about any and everything we can dream up whether we're in the flesh, the spirit, whatever. I'm talking about godly things we hope for. And we're to have a conviction that God will establish it, though we can't yet see it. But what happens is, even when we start out in faith, it dwindles and we drift easily to discouragement. I think many, if not most of us, deal with this. But here are four essentials to help on this journey of walking by faith. Number one, embrace the waiting. We want the instant miracle, right? We're like, God, I know you're able. Can you just make it happen? And God is able. Pray for the miracle. But there's waiting even before a miracle. The blind man healed by Jesus was blind his entire life until that day he met him. The woman had the issue of blood for 12 years before Jesus healed her. The lame man had been waiting for a miracle at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. 
I'm just saying. In this Christian life, we will always be waiting for one thing or another, big or small, whether we like it or not. We can either stay discouraged or we can embrace the waiting. There is a purpose in the waiting. God is always, always, always at work. And most of the time, he's working on us, growing us, refining us, drawing us closer to him. Waiting keeps us looking to the Lord and building our trust in him. Jumpstart your walk of faith by viewing waiting as an opportunity to seek the Lord and grow closer to him. Our focus should always be on him. Number two, reject fear and doubt. Believe. We absolutely cannot walk by faith if we are plagued by fear and doubt. Fear and doubt are at the other extreme of faith. Jesus said to Peter, you of little faith, why do you doubt? Fear and doubt seem to be the favorite poison of the enemy because they can dominate our lives. The result is that we don't have the assurance. And because we don't have the assurance, we don't take the steps of faith we need to take. Even if it's just mentally, we don't believe. If Noah had doubted what God spoke to him or fear looking foolish as he built that ark, he and his family would have drowned along with everybody else. If Abraham had feared leaving the familiar and traveling to a foreign land, if he had not had faith, he would not have seen the promises of God in his life and the life of his descendants. Fear and doubt cause us to walk by sight. We come up with our own plan, our own solution, something we can see, something that makes sense to our human minds. But walking by faith is so superior. It is seeing the power of God, the wisdom of God, the ways of God in action as you move by faith. By sight, the door is closed. By faith, we believe God will open it. We have to reject fear and doubt, no matter how many times they rise up. And they are relentless. We reject those thoughts, run to God for protection, Ask him to help us to cast down those thoughts and replace them with faith-filled thoughts. We pray, Lord, help my unbelief. We are believers. God wants us to believe in the promises in his word and in the things he has called us to do. He wants us to believe that he can heal, that he can protect, that he can deliver. He is God. God knows it's not easy for us to walk by faith. He gives us grace to do so. He's given us his spirit. We have everything we need. We have to believe we have everything we need. Number three, walk in obedience. A walk of faith is a walk of obedience. I'm not talking about a perfect walk, but when we know we have sin in our lives, and we are unrepentant, we put ourselves at a distance from God and we open the door to all kinds of enemy influence. The fear and doubt for sure, confusion, deception, we'll be assured of the things we hope for and it'll be all the wrong things. Everything will be going on but a walk of faith because we're in the flesh, not in the spirit. But God is gracious full of compassion and mercy, and he forgives. He will even give you grace to move to a place of repentance. Seek him, ask him to help you. I know this is not a raw, raw, feel good type of thing, but the truth sets us free. Sin weakens. Obedience brings power and blessing to your walk of faith. Number four, Read your Bible. I do not mind being a broken record on the importance of reading your Bible. You have to. There is no way you can have a strong walk of faith without filling up on the word. I'm not talking about just looking up motivational verses 
I'm talking about growing in your understanding of who God is, what his will is, how he works, who you are in Christ, and what he's already given you in Christ. These things build up our faith. Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. Knowing him is supreme. Paul said, I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, to know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. And knowing that we're called to suffer for his sake is important because when the suffering comes, we're not as likely to get discouraged, but to keep moving by faith. When we read about the life of Daniel and him saying, I'm going to pray to God, whether you feed me to the lions or not. And then see God shut the mouths of the lions. That builds our faith. When we see the apostles proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ with their very lives at risk, that builds our faith. The Bible gives us an eternal perspective to know this is not our home. This is temporary. A great glory is yet to come. Death doesn't even have a sting. We have the victory already. Am I saying you have to read all 66 books of the Bible before you can have a serious walk of faith? Absolutely not. God meets us where we are as we read. You might be a new believer just getting into the word and have an awesome walk of faith. What I'm saying is that the word is life. It is food. It is encouragement. It is grace. It is power. It is everything to us. Staying in the word builds up our faith as we keep our eyes fixed on the author and finisher of our faith.